Hello, everyone. It is Friday, February 17th, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. My name is Jesse Anderson. I'm a production engineering manager here at SpaceX, and I am joining you from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Welcome to our live launch coverage of Inmarsat's I6F2 mission. If you've been following along, earlier today we launched 51 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit from our launch site in California. So tonight's launch marks SpaceX's 211th overall mission to date and our second launch today. Inmarsat provides mobile satellite communications globally with its 15 satellites in geostationary orbit. I6F2 is the second of two I6 satellites that will support the expansion of Inmarsat's orchestra network, connecting people, technology, and more for decades. We'll have a bit more about tonight's mission a bit. We'll learn a little bit more about tonight's mission a little bit later on the webcast, but at T minus 13 minutes, let's learn a little bit more about the Falcon 9 vehicle supporting tonight's mission. Hello everyone, my name is Faden Tithi and I'm an avionics systems engineer here at SpaceX. On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 vehicle, a two-stage rocket that is designed and manufactured by SpaceX for the reliable and safe transport for people and payloads into Earth orbit and beyond. This entire vehicle on your screen stands about 229 feet tall, or almost as tall as the Taj Mahal in India, standing about 240 feet. If you look closely, the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage, also referred to as the booster. Its primary objective is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space and then separate from the rest of the rocket. Not only is the first stage the largest part of the rocket, but it is also the portion of the rocket that we attempt to land on our autonomous drone ship or back on land for future reuse. Now, reusability is key to all of this, as this allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the rocket, which then turns drives the cost of access to space. Tonight's booster on your screen is flying for the third time, previously having supported the GPS-3, Space Vehicle 6, and the Crew-5 missions. Above the first stage, here is the second stage, which houses the single Merlin vacuum engine, or the MVAC engine which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the I6F2 payload to orbit. The payload for tonight's launch is safely enclosed inside of this 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is also the large barrel structure with the pointed nose on top of the second stage. Made of carbon composite material, the fairing protects the satellite on their way to orbit. The fairing is then jettisoned approximately three minutes into the flight. The fairing halves you see on your screen today are flight proven. Now, after the separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth and be recovered by our recovery team. And lastly on your screen, what you see is a large stress structure or the transporter erector, or known as TE. We use the TE to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. The TE also routes the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and satellites until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes. Falcon 9 uses a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 for its fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen, or what we call LOX, as its oxidizer. Currently, RP-1 is nearly fully loaded on the first stage, and the second stage is fully fueled. Liquid oxygen loading is currently underway on both stages. Now, we have also begun helium loading. The vehicle uses helium gas as a pressurant, pushing the RP-1 and liquid oxygen through the Merlin engines. At T minus seven minutes, engine chill will begin. This is where we allow a small amount of the super chilled liquid oxygen to flow into the Merlin engine's turbo pumps prior to the full flow of liquid oxygen into the vehicle to avoid any thermal shocks to the system. Now, finally, the transport erector will retract away from the rocket just slightly at the T minus four, around the T minus four and a half minute mark, providing clearance for Falcon 9 to lift off. Now at T minus nine minutes and about 15 seconds, Falcon 9 is tracking no issues and the payload is healthy. 
range is ready to support and weather is green for our mission tonight. If for some reason we do not launch tonight, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. As Jesse mentioned earlier, our mission tonight is for the Inmarsat I-6 F-2 payload. Inmarsat's constellation helps the government respond when disaster strikes in over 80 countries. Not only that, it also helps provide aviation and maritime safety services across the world's skies and seas. But for now, let's learn a little bit more about tonight's mission and the payload on board Falcon 9. Hello and welcome to this exciting event, the launch of our second Inmarsat-6 satellite. Like its sister spacecraft launched in late 2021, I-6F2 is one of the world's most advanced commercial communication satellites and carries both our Global Express and Alera connectivity payloads. With this mission, we are again significantly increasing the capacity and capabilities available to our mobility, government and IoT customers throughout the world. Let me explain why this launch is important, not just to us, but to millions across the globe. Our networks are the linchpin for global safety and global trade. They bring the most reliable connectivity to communities not served by terrestrial telecommunications. If you fly across an ocean, the chances are that the cockpit is connected through Inmarsat. Over a million seafarers know that if their ship is in trouble, they can press a button and help will be on its way thanks to Inmarsat. In a natural disaster, Inmarsat connectivity is available instantly to coordinate rescue efforts and reconnect separated families. But we do much, much more. We enable the adoption of digital technologies on ships and deliver exceptional Wi-Fi to keep airline passengers connected in the air, to name but two. Looking to the future, we are enabling everything from UAVs and flying taxis to autonomous vessels. We also work with many governments and help support their missions whenever and wherever at a moment's notice. On top of that, our satellites play an increasingly important role in enabling industries to lower or even eliminate their carbon emissions. Our launch today is certified as a carbon neutral event in accordance with the Carbon Neutral Protocol, the leading global framework for carbon neutrality, an achievement of which I am immensely proud. I'm also proud that we are the first satellite communications company in the world to commit to being net zero by 2050, with our initial scope one and two emissions targets being validated by the Science-Based Targets Initiative. While you may not have heard of Inmarsat, there is scarcely a person on the planet who does not benefit directly or indirectly from our satellite networks and our comprehensive portfolio of communication services. Of course, we did not get here alone. The launch of I6F2 was only achieved through the exceptional work of teams across the world. Thanks go to our manufacturing partner, Airbus Defense and Space, and our launch partner, SpaceX. Nico, stage separation. In their condition. I also want to praise the amazing work of all our employees, including our I6 program manager, Edwina Paisley, and her team working with our Chief Technology Officer colleagues under the leadership of Peter Haringer. Every day, across the world, millions of people, organizations and governments trust in Marsat to connect them at the moments when it matters most. Our customers count on us when it simply has to work. We have been delivering this certainty for over 40 years. Today, our customers have the certainty that we have a strong, growing business, one that is at the forefront of satellite communications innovation. They have the certainty that everything we build is based on what they need, not just today, but into the 2030s and beyond. Certainty that we have a roadmap that will travel with them into the future. Certainty is at the heart of our deep-rooted promise, born out of decades of service to connect the world for good. In an uncertain world, Inmarsat stands ready to deliver on its promise. Thank you. Next up, the transporter erector, the TE, will retract away from Falcon. We will first see the clamp arms begin to open, which are around the second stage, just below the fairing. And there you can see them there, just below the fairing. 
Once they are fully open, then the TE can retract away from the vehicle, and that's that structure next to the vehicle that you see there on your screen. At T0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. And on your screen, you can see those clamp arms are opening up. Again, once they are fully open, that TE will begin to retract. And it looks like it's retracting there. It's very slow and steady. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged and will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. And it looks like the TE is now fully reclined. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stage are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish prop loading about a minute apart from each other. The first stage will finish at T minus three minutes and the second stage at T minus two minutes. Now you can see some white clouds around the vehicle. Stage one locks load is complete. It's a good call out that prop loading is complete on the first stage vehicle. Now those white clouds that you see are the chilled gas above the liquid oxygen tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that gas comes out in contact with the warmer air, it begins to condense into clouds or water, and that's what you're seeing. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. What that means is the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. Just inside T minus two seconds, we will light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. In Marsat's I 6 F2 payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the vehicle. Weather is still looking green, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 10.59 p.m. Eastern Time. As mentioned earlier, if for some reason we do not launch tonight, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. And with that, we are proceeding into the last couple minutes of the terminal count. Stage two locks loading should have completed. Just waiting for a call. Stage two locks load is complete. And there it is. Now that prop loading is complete, the vehicle is fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. And you can see a little bit more of those white clouds that I mentioned. That is because we are now venting out the liquid oxygen line on that transporter erector. Ground gas closeouts have started. The next event will be at T minus one minute. The internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown, and this is an autonomous vehicle, so it will take us all the way through the entire mission. Falcon 9 is in startup. Great news. We are in startup and now just waiting the final call from the launch director. Launch director, we're we'll go for launch. And great news, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 seconds. with Inmarsat's I6F2 payload. And 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off of Falcon 9 and Inmarsat. Go Falcon, go Inmarsat. Vehicle is pitching that range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Telemetry nominal.
We are just about a minute into flight, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40. Falcon 9 is supersonic. At Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying Inmarsat's I-6F2 payload. We are coming up on Max Q here. Max Q. And great news, we have just passed through Max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. Now the rocket is typically, typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So you can keep an eye on the stage one telemetry that's on the bottom left hand of your screen there. You can see those nine M1D engines and back burning engine bright. Chill has started. Burning bright there on your screen. We do have three events coming up in rapid succession. That will be Miko stage separation and SES-1. Miko is main engine cutoff. That's where we shut down all nine of the M1D engines that you see burning bright on your screen. That will help slow the stage down and prepare for stage separation. That's where the first stage will separate from second stage. First stage will come back home down to Earth while second stage continues with SES-1. That's second stage engine start one and that MVAC engine will ignite on the second stage. We are coming up on those three events here in a few seconds. Miko, stage separation in SES-1. Main engine cut off. Stage separation. And back ignition. And very cool views of Miko stage separation. On your right hand screen, you can see that MVAC engine is glowing bright. That has now ignited. On your left hand screen, you can see the grid fins deploying on that first stage. Now, coming up next will be fairing separation. The fairing helps protect the payload on ascent, but once we're in the vacuum of space, we no longer need that protection. So we will jettison the fairing hats. And that's coming up here in a few seconds. Fairing separation. And great call out and visual confirmation that the fairing halves have deployed. And we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again tonight once they make their way back down to Earth. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. It's about T plus four minutes into tonight's mission. If you are just joining us now, Falcon 9 has lifted off successfully, carrying Inmarsat's I 6 F 2 payload. Now, we're about to begin the first of the two planned MVAC burns for satellite deploy. Around T plus six minutes, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. To start the entry burn, we will relight three of the M 1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E 9, followed shortly by the E 1 and the E5 engines, which will slow down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. As Falcon 9 is coming back down really fast, we need to slow down to reduce the re-entry forces, which will then help us recover and reuse that first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or commonly known as a rocket's plume. This deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. Now that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle, making it a little sooty. Oftentimes, prior to a launch, you can see that soot on your first stage. As you can see on your screen, the second stage is glowing red. And that is our MVAC engine. Now, coming up in a few seconds, we should be seeing the entry burn begin for the first stage as the booster comes back on its way to Earth.
As you can see on the left side of your screen, that is the first stage. And we're just a few seconds away from the entry burn begin. Stage one FTS says saved. Stage one entry burn startup. As you can see and hear it, stage one entry burn has begun. Stage one entry burn shut down. As you can see in here on that, stage one entry burn has shut down. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. Falcon 9 on your screen today is supporting and doing the re-entry burn for the third time. Previously supported the GPS-3, Space Vehicle 6, and the Crew-5 missions. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level. These achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. Fun fact, at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power, and it's consuming approximately about 700 gallons of fuel per second. That MVAC engine on your screen is optimized by 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. That is the vacuum stage of space. One, transonic. Coming up next, we should be seeing shutdown on our MVAC engine on the second stage, followed quickly by our landing burn on the first stage as it's coming stage back two down. Stage two has saved. Terminal guidance. MVAC shut down. And there you can see it in here on the nets. We have confirmation of Seco stage 1. Stage 1 landing burn. And the landing burn for Stage 1 has begun. We are now just waiting for confirmation of good orbital insertion for our second stage. Nominal orbit insertion. There you've heard on the nets, nominal orbital Spread insertion. The signal, Cape Canaveral. We are now waiting for Falcon to stage land Stage 1 landing leg deploy. Back on our drone ship, just read the instructions. And as you can see and hear it, you have SpaceX's 173rd recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Now, the mission isn't just over yet. The second stage is now embarking on its first coast phase. After the coast phase, we will light that MVAC engine for a second time around, around T plus 26 minutes. So till then, sit back and we'll see you back here.
expected loss of signal Bermuda.
Kerbau. Welcome back to the webcast of our Falcon 9 mission carrying in Marsat's I-6 F-2 payload. If you're just joining us now, we've had a nominal mission so far. Falcon 9 launched at 10.59 Eastern from Space Launch Complex 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. We have successfully recovered the first stage back on our drone ship tonight, which marks the overall third landing for this particular booster and the 173rd overall landing of an orbital class rocket. While all that was happening, the second stage has completed its first burn, taking in Marsat's I-6 F2 payload into its initial parking orbit. Now, we're about a few seconds away from the second ignition of the MVAC, which will carry the second stage and Inmarsat's payload into the orbit needed to deploy the satellite. And there you have seen it. We have second engine start. The MVAC engine has start began burning. Now, this burn is planned to last just under a minute. As you can see, that engine is glowing bright. And the speed and the velocity of stage two is picking up. Coming up next, we should be hearing a call out for second engine cutoff or SECO2. And there you've heard it, we have SECO 2. Nominal orbit insertion. And we've heard the confirmation for nominal orbit insertion. Inmarsat's I-6 F-2 payload is still attached to Falcon 9's second stage with payload deploy scheduled to occur in about five minutes. While we wait, sit back and enjoy the views of outer space and the second stage.
acquisition of signal heart of B-Stock. Hello there and welcome back to our webcast. We are nearing the end of our mission tonight for our customer in Marsat. Now, just a few minutes ago, we had a successful second burn of our second stage, and up next is our final milestone for this mission, payload deploy, which should be coming up here shortly. And as you can see on your screen, there's the payload with some great views of Earth in the background. Payload separation confirmed. In Marsat, I6F2 is drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage out in space. And that confirms successful deployment of the Inmarsat I6F2 payload. And that will end our webcast for tonight. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer Inmarsat for entrusting us with tonight's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting tonight's efforts.